uh, I'm going to rehash this uh, second problem. So again, this is a banked curve uh, problem. This is a car that is traveling around uh, a circular track, which you can see on the right hand side here. Uh, and as it goes around uh, the track, its position you know, stays constant on the track, meaning it doesn't go down the track at all and it doesn't go up the track at all. It stays, it stays where it is. All right, but it is continually moving around this circular track, which again, you can see you know, on, on this right-hand side. Um, because it's moving in a circle, the net force, as shown in, in this diagram here, this net force, uh, shown right here, needs to be directed towards the center of the circle. Okay, so that has to be what the net force is. So a better way for me to explain it and do it, so I know that the sum of the forces in the x direction is going to be the net force, and, and not for any other reason. And maybe, uh, maybe starting with the y direction is more reasonable, but because it's going to stay in this location, it's not going to move up the ramp or down the ramp. Its displacement in the y direction is going, is going to be nothing. It's not going to move up or down at all. There is no net force in that direction because there is no net displacement in that direction. However, there is this force, this net force in uh, the horizontal direction moving, in, moving like this. There must be. As it goes around the circle, we must have this, this force that is kind of pulling it towards the center of the circle in order for it to move in a circle. It is a requirement. So because the forces in the y direction are zero, and for different reasons than they have been in the past, like uh, sort of. All right, we can we can then claim the the forces in the x direction must therefore be the equal to the net force, because it's moving in a circle. We can then say, well, that means the sum of the forces in the x direction being equal to the net force has to be equal to mv squared over r. We end up with. Uh, here that well what forces are in the x direction remains to be seen because of our geometry up here but uh, those forces are going to be what causes this and in the y direction we have some geometry to deal with as well remember we are sticking with our normal x y sort of coordinate system which in order to keep this picture from being just absolutely nuts I'm going to try to avoid some of that however I will do what I did in class which is to try to make sense of uh, the geometry by kind of drawing by just almost like shifting this triangle up a little bit. The other thing you can do is move this point right here down. You could, uh, but uh, instead I will uh, I'll, I'll do the same. I'll do it the same way in class, just so we can have some continuity here. All right. So first we have this line, and then I can just draw this same triangle. So again, this is the same triangle which means that this is the same angle. This is useful because then I can also draw a horizontal line that intersects that, that point as well. It's sort of horizontal. All right, now I can maybe move that down. All right, so now what we have is this line that I just drew, right? This line is parallel to this line right here. And then those lines are intersected by a transversal, which is this line. Okay, being that they intersect in this particular way, we know what this angle is right here. It means that this angle right here has to be theta. By definition, normal force is perpendicular to the surface, which means that when we look right in here, that this angle from this horizontal to this line that is perpendicular, right? Well, by definition, it has to be a 90 degree angle, which means that the rest of this angle would have to be theta. Well, maybe we don't need to go into all of that. Well, because here and here is why. We are going to draw um, our, we'll just, what do we want to do? We'll stick with this. All right, we're going to draw our components here. All right, we need to know, I don't know if you can really tell the difference there, but we need to know how much of this force, this normal force is in the x direction and how much of this normal force is in the y direction. So, so-called normal force in the y direction and, uh, and I should draw this outside of the triangle here, uh, the normal force in the x direction. Again, a little, little bit hard to see. Or, okay, so because I, of what I know, and I'm gonna dive in, to, I'm gonna dive in here, and, and so we can see just geometrically a little bit what's going on. Because I know that this angle right here is 
uh, 90 minus theta. And I know that this has to be a right angle. I decided it was. It means that this angle up here has to be theta. Okay, so instead of trying to dance around uh, and like I was doing in class with like saying this is alpha, therefore this is alpha, um, it makes more sense for us to just call this theta and just to do all of our measurements based upon this angle and then not even worry about this 90 minus theta stuff at all. All right, so let me, uh, let me, let me back off some of these different things now that, we can, now that we saw it. Obviously you can pause the video or go back if you want to take another look. Um, but, uh, so we have, we have that now, which means I'm now going to define all of my normal force stuff based upon that angle being theta. And it's, uh, all right, and now I'm just cleaning it up so this picture isn't, isn't a total mess. So the normal force, those two vectors there, are defined by theta by saying the Fny is equal to the Fn cosine of theta and then the fnx is going to be the normal force right because it's the opposite side here fn uh, sine theta so now we have those those things so clearly even cleaning this up you know more if i wanted to i'll leave at least this much for notes we have we have this here which means for my free body diagram right this is not my, well not for my free body diagram but to understand the forces these two forces, though not drawn to scale in the y direction, the f and y and fg must be equal to each other in order for this to not slide up the ramp or down the ramp at all. And this f and x is the only force that's in the x direction, which means it must be equal to uh, it must be equal to the mv squared over r. Okay, so uh, so let's continue now that we have these kinds of things here. So in the x direction, I can now say the only force I have here is the Fnx, and that must be equal to mv squared over r. In the y, and, and we'll see quickly that we run into a dead end here, so I'll continue to that point. Fnx is defined as, just to verify up here, Fn sine theta, that side that's opposite. So this is Fn sine theta being equal to mv squared over r. If we are trying to solve this for v, we can't we can't do this now, right? Because uh, while this is sine theta, and while we have an m here, and that was I guess fine according to what I wrote before. Um, oops, I was supposed to have an r in there. It's all these mistakes. All right. Uh, then uh, we still have this Fn. So we need to be able to take care of that Fn. We need to know what the normal force is equal to. So let's look at the y direction. So in the y direction, uh, what forces are actually there? Well, we have two. We have the force Fg, which I'll say is acting in a negative direction, and then we have the normal force part that's in the y direction. And those two things must be equal to each other because they are both equal to zero. So Fn y is then equal to, and I'll write this as mg, putting it in terms of things that we that we can write it and are allowed to write it in. All right. So expanding what Fn y is again, it is equal to Fn cosine theta. It's equal to mg. All right, now we can divide both sides by cosine theta and we get what Fn is equal to. It's equal to mg cosine theta. Now we're at a point where we can actually solve this problem. And the solution is, is pretty nice and fairly memorable, uh, which is how I knew that I immediately, I immediately got it wrong. So I can substitute this back in over here now and I'll, uh, I'll change colors so it's, it's clear now. Uh, so I'm going to substitute that in right there. Uh, so now this becomes mg over cosine theta times sine theta, see it now, equals mv squared over r. All right, so you can see the m's are going to cancel out. And you can see here we have sine over cosine, which means tangent, which is nice. So the next line then looks like g tan theta is equal to v squared over r. Multiplying both sides by r, taking the square root, we get r g tan theta, taking the square root is equal to v. 
And that's our final answer. And if I had been paying attention above, I wouldn't have written the R. I would have only written, <laughs> excuse me, I would have written the R and not written the M. And there, and, and there is our answer. Is, uh, the velocity is going to be equal to just these terms right here. The radius, acceleration due to gravity of whatever planet you're on, and the angle of the ramp. So which means that we can have a, uh, a, a car go around a frictionless ramp at an, as long as it's at an angle. And we see that this does not work right, for an angle of, uh, of zero. So as the, ramp, as the ramp declines, meaning this angle theta gets smaller, we see that we will, uh, we will approach this whole, thing, this whole thing being zero, which means this no longer works.